I want to thank you for being here uh, on this important occasion where you get to think about yourselves and your future and what you want to do with your life. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Dr. Duncan and his colleagues for making this opportunity available to you. Uh, I thank Dr. Duncan for inviting me and having me participate in his life again. As you may know, uh, he was a student at Yale Medical School when I was one of the associate deans. And uh, it was a great pleasure to see him uh, do so well in medicine, uh, to do so well in life, and as a citizen, African-American citizen, giving back to the community and to the African-American community in particular. And it's a great pleasure and a reward to a teacher to see the student uh, achieve at such a high level. And it is my hope that you can look at him and look at me and look at others who had to come so far to get here and yet managed to do so out of a desire to be successful as individuals, but also to be successful as citizens and people who gave back to others. And so I hope this important day and days for you will help you prepare to do the same thing. I want to tell you a little bit about my career in medicine. Uh, I had to come a long way. Uh, my grandparents were slaves in rural Mississippi and rural uh, Alabama. Uh, they picked cotton and sharecroppers and tenant farmers after slavery. My mother had two, less than two years of education. Uh, my father had maybe six years of schooling. Uh, the two of them uh, left the South in, uh, with the first great migration and uh, went to East Chicago, Indiana, where my father was the Sunday school teacher and my mother was the young migrant child in his classroom. And eventually, uh, the two of them were married and provided with almost no money, working as sharecrop, working as a, as a laborer, steel mill labor and uh, a, as domestic worker, uh, they gave us an experience at home, fun, laughter, learning, developing skills, uh, having fun, but preparing ourselves to be successful in school and in life, and gave us an experience that allowed the five children to obtain 13 college degrees, and uh, eventually become contributing citizens of the society, uh, family members, uh, and uh, members of a democracy, and working to make it a better democracy, working to make it good for all. They produced two doctors, uh, two educators, uh, one businessman, educator, and eventually we all made contributions to our communities in various ways. My uh, one sister was a principal of the school. Um, my other sister was a Head Start uh, leader in the community. Uh, my uh, brother uh, had businesses and real estate. And uh, of course, I was in medicine and my brother was an eye doctor so that we all had our opportunity to live the American dream, to give to the community, to promote the African American community, and to promote democracy because the African American gift to America 
is the creation of a model that says that it is caring about others, it is working hard, it's contributing to yourselves and to the larger society that makes a democracy work. It's not money alone, it's not power alone, it is your hard work and contribution to yourself and your family and to your community that is the model for success. You may be saying uh, that my message then is responsible living as an important way in your future and a future uh, career. And that is what I'm saying. But you may be also asking, how do you do that in a racist society? Uh, and what I did and what we did was to focus on making that contribution to ourselves. And it began with, with me very early as a little three-year-old child in which I said that I'm gonna become a doctor when I get to be a big man. And my family reinforced that from the very beginning, from the very first words, uh, they reinforced that notion. And were always preparing me and encouraging me to prepare myself and to not let the racism get in the way. So that at six years of age, when a white classmate invited me by his house after my parents gave a party for me in school because she didn't believe it, she commented after I explained what had happened. Uh, she didn't know and she used the N-word, did anything but fight and drink all the time, which was confusing to me because we were poor people and we lived in a uh, neighborhood in which there was a tavern around the corner and all the people we saw uh, who were drunk and fighting were white, not black, but we couldn't understand. It was confusing and we knew that race was uh, difficult and was going to be difficult. But eventually, they and they always pointed out that, uh, that you want to prepare yourself and that things would get better because America wants to be a democracy and it wants to be a Christian nation and that it had to give the colored man a better chance. And so work hard was the message and prepare yourself and prepare yourself, not only your family, but to change uh, the community, the society in a way that makes it better for all people. And that was the message, the kind of mixed message that we received. Yes, there is racism, but you don't let racism get you down and you remember, and on one occasion when my classmates invited me at a party I wasn't invited to, uh, invited me and then called me on the telephone from the party. My mother knew that I was confused after that, uh, and she said to me, and I was about 12 years old at that time, she said, nobody is better than you. And I never forgot it. I always remembered, uh, and I particularly remembered uh, when uh, the president said that his mother told him, because he stuttered, uh, nobody is better than you. And I remember that, and it's important for all of you to remember, and that you are who you are on the based on the way you live and the way you carry yourself, develop yourself, and the contribution you make to your family and to other families. Uh, and so racism is there. There will be other hard times, uh, but y you have the stuff to make it. You have to develop it and promote it yourself with the help of all of the people around you, like the people around you this week. You are here uh, this week uh, to th discover and think about what you want for yourself and how to get there in medicine. And all careers in medicine are honorable. It was one of the reasons that I wanted to be in medicine. Uh, 
And I had to discover what the issues in, around me were about, like racism. Uh, and I had an opportunity because I started out to become a general practitioner of medicine, had no idea uh, that I could become a psychiatrist or a child psychiatrist or a public health psychiatrist. I had to discover all of those things as I went along. And so I had the opportunity to do that in medicine, which is one of the things that is so important. It is a diverse field uh, with diverse people now becoming more diverse all the time. Uh, and it is a place where you can build your career, find your way, uh, and I encourage you uh, to do that. It was that spirit of discovery that led me from Indiana, where I had mixed support, sometimes difficult challenges because of race, uh, but uh, I had support from people of all backgrounds, uh, but I decided that I wanted to go to Howard Medical School where I would be any place where not only was I accepted, I was valued and promoted. Uh, they wanted me to be successful so that I could make contributions to the rest of the community uh, and to myself and my family. But it is discovering what you want and how to go about doing it and getting it that is so very important. And that working hard, having fun, uh, so that you can prepare yourself to make a contribution makes your life purposeful, meaningful, and contributes to your opportunity to be successful. Now let me tell you about how uh, my concern about my community my concern about the society allowed me to find my way in medicine and to find my way from the plan to become a general practitioner to becoming associate dean of the medical school at Yale and uh, a psychiatrist who developed a method that helped turn schools from poor performing schools to well performing schools that made it possible for low-income children, very much like myself and my own parents, uh, to be successful uh, in the university, but also in their communities and make a contribution to the community. Uh, I was concerned when I noticed that many of my friends who were just as bright and just as able uh, went on a downhill course in school, uh, and in life. And the question was, what happened? And it was because I realized that they didn't have the kind of support of the people around them and community that I had, and that I had been prepared by family and church and school and other places to be successful despite opposition, uh, despite uh, hatred, despite other things. And also, I noticed that many people uh, were there to help and who wanted to be helpful. And so I was able to put together and then have some experiences that made me say, I have a responsibility. I have to find a way to make things better. And so during my internship, I was looking at uh, bright young people who should have been successful uh, who went on a downhill course. And how do you stop that? How do you prevent that? I eventually uh, worked in a uh, helping agency for parents and whose families had been thrown out of the housing projects um, and helped those families stabilize and live better lives. Uh, and I began to think that why not the schools? Why can't we change schools so that they prepare more people to be successful so that they can contribute to their communities uh, in ways that were good for all of us? And that led eventually from the change from general practice of medicine or medicine and into psychiatry, child psychiatry, and eventually public health, 
realizing that if we want to change the lives of children, people, families, societies, you have to start with not only academic learning, but preparing children to be successful uh, as people and to be able to interact well with other people and to be able to contribute to making society the great society, a good society, a place where we feel safety and uh, we feel the comfort and the, we're motivated to try and learn at our best and highest level and motivated to try to make a contribution, not only to ourselves and our families, but to the entire communities. And so that was what I discovered. And using your experience, your training, your preparation to find the place that works for you, to find the place, the, the specialty, the uh, specific area of medicine that works for you, finding that is your job. And you can do it, and you can do it well, and you can make decisions, and you'll have to make decisions that will make life good for you uh, now and on into the future. But not only for you, but for everybody around you. As I look at the problems in the world today, I realize that those problems can't be solved by uh, military might. They can't be solved by money. They can only be solved when people focus on people and helping other people be successful in lives, life and to have an opportunity to be successful in life today. Uh, I think that what Dr. Duncan and his colleagues are doing is just wonderful to give you a chance to think about your careers, not only as medical people, but as citizens of the society, citizens of a democracy, as African Americans who have come such a long way. We're still a long way to go, but have come such a long way uh, that, uh, that, that there might be light at the end of the tunnel. And you are the light. Uh, you can think differently, you can work differently, you can care differently, so that we have a society that works for all of us. Thank you and good luck to all of you in your careers and in your life.